Hi everyone and welcome back to the Hobby Dude 007 channel, part four of our Barracuda build. Well, as you can see, some of our sub-assemblies are done. We're going to be taking a look at both the 125th and the 164th scale. We're going to do a lot of painting today and really get into how we got to where we are right now and take a look at uh, what's next. So stick around. We're going to be doing a lot of painting today, but in addition to our regular paint, we're going to be using seven different colors of all-clad metals. Metallic finishes are very important, uh, to me anyway, because they, they give you subtle differences in different things. Anything from the exhaust manifold, uh, steel, any burnt metal, things like that. So we're going to be taking a look at some of these as we go through too. In fact, I'm going to do a separate video on just metallic finishes. But uh, let's get to painting.
Our interior mock-up looks great. We're going to go ahead and blow it back apart and get uh, our paint on it on both the 164th and 125th. Let's break out the airbrush and get to it. Our painting is done with the exception of the 25th scale body, and we'll touch on that a little later. Let's start with our engine. We did the Chrysler engine blue, and the only thing here I'm going to do is a wash with uh, the Tamiya accent uh, colors. And I'm going to do that on the transmission, the engine. Then I'm going to mask here at the exhaust manifolds. When these things come out of the factory, even the exhaust manifolds are painted body, or excuse me, uh, engine color. But I'm going to go back where that burns off and use uh, the all clad exhaust manifold. And I think I'm going to dry brush that on there. I'm not sure yet. I may airbrush it. Uh, but that's going to give us a good look there of a used exhaust. The factory Mopar batteries had the red uh, cell caps on them. I hope that's adjusting. So I went ahead and got that out of the way. Um, this is the all-clad dark aluminum on the alternator. And I went back and picked out uh, the slots there with some copper. So you can see that down in there. Well, I hope you can anyway. Um, so that'll give us a kind of real look. And then um, also in dark aluminum, but I did a wash on this with uh, the, the uh, Tamiya 
and you can see this is the air conditioning compressor and it's a subtle difference if you look at them you can tell they are two different metal colors uh, with that wash on it especially and then the carburetor I did in a pale burnt metal and then I did the wash over it as well and I don't know if we got too much lighter if you can see that or not um, but it's uh, kind of hard to see but that's where we are on the engine so far. The uh, interior, and listen, I've got to apologize on the interior and the uh, tires. My wife and I are about to go on vacation in the morning, and I was trying to rush this stuff through. And when I got into the specifics of the wood grain uh, on the door panels and in the console, all of that I lost. Uh, my apologies. <laughs> I thought I had loaded it from the camera to the computer, and then I checked. I thought that's what I saw on the computer, so I deleted it off the camera, and, well, I can't go back and redo it. But uh, I'll go over a little bit of how I did that real quick. My wood grain, I do it in several ways. When the wood grain is not very predominant as far as the, the grains in there, what I did with this one, I'll just go ahead and show you. I took um, just a brown Sharpie and slowly and easily went down in there and picked out the rest of the silver with just um, tester silver paint but what I will do is in addition to using this I will use craft pencils in two or three different shades of um, browns browns tans things like that so depending on how dark I want that uh, wood grain to be I'll just dust over just lightly with the uh, artist pencils in a lighter uh, tone of brown and as you see not only did it give it a more realistic look and bring out the, that wood grain but it also uh, really dulled it down so it's not as sh uh, shiny as what a sharpie normally is and that worked out really well also on the dash which doggone it I left that in the other room but I also did that in the console uh, the seat belts were another issue. The seat belts that come in the kit, I really like the texture of them, but I, ugh, I couldn't stand how out of scale thick they were. So I took some 320 sandpaper, just put it down under my finger and just sand it away. And as you can see, I've got a good thin, thin belt now. Um, and that gave it a little more scale. The last thing I did here is I masked off, I painted the uh, package shelf flat black, and then on the carpet, you can see that is um, embossing powder. Oops, I'm sorry. Um, and how you do that is you just, I took Tamiya flat black, and I painted the entire floor, and then you just dump the uh, embossing powder in there. Uh, I'll let, let it sit for a couple hours and then go back on a piece of paper and just kind of tap it back out and dump it right back in here. I've probably done four or five cars with this. This this is black. I have it in several other colors, red and, and uh, charcoal, things like that. But you can see this thing is still pretty full because uh, just save it. Uh, this stuff will last you for eons. I think I got this. I think it was Hobby Lobby, but it could have been uh, Michael's. Really, really, really good stuff, and it gives you a beautiful, realistic, not only look, but it actually even feels like carpet. Um, then the seats just drop right down in there. Um, the other thing that I've gotten done is what you noticed where we did our chrome and a little bit of the paint. We got our body color on the uh, lower gravel pan. I haven't picked out our uh, details yet. And we've got our chromed, re-chromed bumper on the back uh, looking really, really good. And the, the grill, I did a little bit differently. Um, I, the bumper is, is chrome. Um, this is chrome. It looks really good. But I did the the grill itself in polished aluminum. And you can tell there is a difference there. And of course, then I went back with the Tamiya panel line again and put a wash down in there. Then went back with uh, the tester's turn signal amber and uh, put that in the turn signals. So this is uh, ready to go as well. 
and the last thing on the 125th scale was, and again, I apologize, I went through a step-by-step -step filming this on the tires. These are those elusive, oops, um, W23 rims, uh, the wheels, that uh, Chrysler, actually, they put it on the Barracuda, they put it on several cars, I think the Roadrunner was another one, and they were um, recalled because they were cracking around the lugs and, and they were breaking. So they recalled them and most people turned them back in. Now, Amanda bought her car. By the way, she paid $570 for that uh, Barracuda in 1972. Um, but anyway, her car in 1972 still had these wheels on them. And my brother-in-law told me it even had the red line wheels on it. So I was tickled to death to be able to do that. Now, you'll notice, too, instead of sanding the tread, which is typical of most uh, most all of us, and, and including me, I usually do that. But these AMT red line uh, tires, and let me show you. I'll get that real quick. These are the uh, custom muscle car red line by AMT. There's two different sizes in there. Um but these things were so good, there was almost zero mold on these mold line at all on there. So I decided, hey, let's let's have some fun and do uh, brand new tires. So as you can see, I've got uh, I kind of buffed the tread a little bit to give it that that little bit of a sheen, so it looks looks like it's brand brand new. And uh, I had a set of slicks decals that had some old tire decals, the the stickers for the tread so i went ahead and hey baby's got new shoes so we've got new shoes on there the um uh, mags themselves are painted with uh all clad steel the edges around each of the holes is i just touched that honestly because it was aluminum with just a silver sharpie of all things and then uh, I started to shoot the chrome around, just mask off and shoot the chrome with some Silly Putty, uh, mask it off and shoot the chrome around the trim ring, but I just used a Molotov. So that worked out really, really well. I think they, they turned out really nice. Um, and let's see, let's look at the uh, 164th real quick. On the 164th, I went ahead and got the interior done. And I think I said in, in part one that I was really impressed with not only the seat pattern, but everything about this thing, everything. If you'll look at them side by side, um, Hot Wheels did their, their homework on that thing. They really kept it accurate. It wasn't some generic thing. Um, and I was able to do the carpeting. Now, because of the confined space, I did not do the embossing powder in the, <laughs> down for that. Uh, that is just a black Sharpie to do the carpeting in there. Uh, but everything else is exactly the same. Um, I think it turned out really, really nice. Now, for the wheels, instead of the stock wheels, I wanted something that had a, a taller profile, uh, just as hers would. And so I found a 1979 Nova, Matchbox Nova, and uh, got that in. And I've gone ahead and cleaned it up, put a little... Uh, steel color down in there so I wanted it to as closely as possible represent uh, what we've got here um, I don't know whether I'm gonna do the red line yet um, probably not but uh, we'll see um, our chassis I've gone ahead and got our overspray like the factory overspray that blows over onto the bottom of the chassis and Went ahead and picked out the engine color, the transmission, drivetrain, leaf springs. And as you can see from the front, I did the wash down into the grill. Um, put a little bit of white over the, the, excuse me, the headlights. And did the same amber over the turn signals in there. And this turned out really, really good. And you can see that uh, lower valance down there that's blue. And on the back side, you got a nice chrome bumper. And we've got that lower gravel pan same thing now what I'm going to do on exhausts is I has a ha, has have a 40 thousandths uh, stainless steel rod which I don't know if you can see the tube there anyway I'm going to be cutting these and making the dual exhausts um, that are going to sit 
Well, they'll be a little bit closer to the body there, but uh, they'll be dual exhausts. And I think I'll have them sitting up more like, more like that. But anyway, I was really pleased with just how that turned out. And then lastly, we've got our uh, body. I am going to do a clear coat. I deliberately did this a little bit more like a powder coat. And, and keep in mind, too, we do have to do the vinyl top on this, too. This one, I'm probably going to paint the vinyl top on. I've done it several ways, but I, th I think I'm going to do the paint ver uh, version on this one. And as you can see, that is a beautiful blue fire metallic is what it's called. And I am pleased as I can be with that. Really, really looks good. Now, next time, we're going to get into uh, the body itself, prep, and all that stuff. And, and uh, we're going to also detail out the engine uh, and start getting a little more of our sub-assemblies together. After that, the, the video that will come after the next one will be our reveal itself. But, uh, again, I apologize that I messed up and didn't get the, uh, the tires and wheel video downloaded before I erased them. Uh, lesson learned until I actually post them. I'm never going to do that again. But listen, thanks so much for watching. Um, I'll see you in the next video.